Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the setting up an SRX chassis cluster with JWeb Learning Bike. All right, here is our example, and there's a few things I want to point out in the topology. We have VSRX1 and VSRX2, which are connected together through the EM0 interface and also the FAB0 interface. And we'll set all that up as far as the connections once we get into JWeb. And then we have Gigi003 and Gigi703, which will happen as far as the interface naming with Gigi703 after the cluster is formed, that we want to put into a redundancy group that connects to the internet. Okay, so what do we want to do? The criteria for our example, we want to use the chassis cluster wizard in JWeb, and then we want to set up a chassis cluster between VSRX1 and VSRX2. And then we want to use Gigi000 and Gigi700 as the FAB0 interface, and we want to place that Gigi003 and Gigi703 in RG1, which is towards the internet. So let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And then we can switch to VSRX2. And the thing to point out here is typically when you form a chassis cluster, you typically would do it through the console, and then you would start with the primary node for RG0, so redundancy group zero. That's going to be the primary for the cluster. You would start with that, run the commands, then switch over to the second node, which would be uh, node one. So the first node would be node zero, the second node would be node one and then go from there and set up the clustering on node one, which is the secondary node, and then form the cluster from there. However, it's going to be a little different with JWeb because JWeb, you need to have an IP address, or rather you need to be accessing the devices through an IP address. You can't do this through the console. So what we're gonna do here is we're first going to start with VSRX2, and as we go through the wizard, it'll be apparent, and I'll talk about why that is necessary. So to begin, we are under the configure main workspace. You can see that on the left if I hover over the ribbon on the left. Then we need to go to the cluster HA setup workspace, which is under the device setup workspace under the configure workspace. So click that. And then we're given the chassis cluster setup wizard and it gives us some options here. Remember that I said we want to start with the secondary unit, which is node one, and so that's where the wizard starts off. It asks, is this the secondary unit you are setting up? And the default option is yes, this is the secondary unit, which is node one. If we were to set up the primary, we'd select no, this is the primary unit, and notice how the graphic changes. It highlights the primary unit, node zero, but we want to set up the secondary unit, which is node one first. So we click next. And it gives us a screen about reviewing the requirements. You must have physical access to both devices. The other unit needs to be the same hardware and also be on the same software version. and gives you the software version that this is currently on, which is 17.4R1.16. And then it gives you the last note that says that both units will be erased and rebooted. So any existing data won't be retrievable. You do have the option, though, to back up a copy of the configuration before rebooting. So keep that in mind that this is going to give the devices a clean wipe. So if you have any logs or any configuration, you want to probably save those beforehand, although we can back up the configuration. So we click Next and move on. And so then it wants us to enter some information for the secondary unit. We need to enter the root password. I mean, currently we have a root password set, but it wants us to set a new root password because recall that we're going to wipe out all the information on the device, which includes the configuration. So let's go ahead and set a password. Confirm that password. And one thing to point out here is that with the password requirements here, you do have to have at least one change of case as you're adding the root password. So keep that in mind. And then we need to set the FXP0 IP address for node 0. And then node 1. So node zero being the primary, node one being the secondary. And these are important to remember because when we set up the primary unit, we'll have to implement the same information here. Then it directs us to connect the units and how to connect them properly. It first wants us to connect the control port, which is going to be Gigi000 on the devices. And so once we've done that, which I've done that previously, we can select that check box and it gives us a little bit of graphical representation of those devices being connected through Gigi000. And then it wants us to set up the fabric port, which in this case is going to be Gigi001. That's how it's going to configure the fabric port here. So I've done this previously. 
the devices are connected on Gigi001, which will be our fabric port and gives us a nice little graphic showing a representation of what it should look like. And then we'll click next. And then we're given a screen that tells us that we're going to have to shut down this unit, which is necessary. The For chassis cluster configuration, the unit has to be rebooted. However, this is a bit different. Whenever you configure a chassis cluster, or at least whenever I've done it in the past, I've always used the CLI command that sets the clustering up and then rebooted the device immediately. What this does here is this will use that command to set the chassis cluster up and then we're going to shut it down. So why that works is because we want to get it all ready for the, on the secondary node, then we're going to have to power that on after it's shut down. But we want to configure the primary node before we power the secondary node back on. So the primary node will become master for the redundancy group zero, which is the redundancy group that handles the control plane in the clustering. So also here we have this option to save a backup file before proceeding with the shutdown. So we can do that. We're not going to do that at this point, so just keep that in mind that you can do that if necessary. Then we're given the screen that tells us that we're going to shut down the secondary device. So this is going to be VSRX2 that we're shutting down. And so what we want to do is we want to click the shutdown and continue. And then it wants us to connect the primary node, which is going to be VSRX1 in this case, and connect to it. And what you can do here is the wizard kind of wants you to use the same IP address that you connected with VSRX to. And you can do that. Then you can click refresh browser. And what that does, that'll just take you straight to the VSRX1 login page with JWeb. And then you log in. Or you could just simply have a different IP address on the primary node, which is VSRX1 in our case, and switch to that and continue the setup from there. So we'll just do that instead of changing up IP addresses. That's a little easier in my opinion, but just keep that in mind. That's what the screen is asking you to do. You just need to access, at this point, access the primary node, which is VSRX1, and continue the configuration from there. So let's go ahead and switch to VSRX1. So here is VSRX1, and we need to click on the cluster HA setup option. And here we are presented with that first screen we saw. And since this is the primary node, we need to select the node. This is the primary unit to be set up node zero option on the first screen. Click next. And we can see what well, before we click next, you can see how it moves the graphic over to highlight primary unit node zero. So keep that in mind. It gives you a graphical representation of what we're going to be doing. And then here we need to enter that same information. The root password information. and then the IP address information of the FXP0 interfaces for both nodes. So we'll go ahead and do that, click Next, and then it just basically says, okay, we need to reboot the device. So reboot and continue. And this is gonna take a bit of time because now we have to reboot the device. And after the device is rebooted, we can click the Refresh Browser button and that'll take us to the uh, login page for VSRX1. And then at that point, we're directed to start or power on the VSRX2 device. However, I've found it best just to start the VSRX2 device right now because the VSRX1 device has already started. It's going to boot first, so it's going to become master or the primary device first because it's going to boot all the way first. And so there's no reason to wait for VSRX1 to reboot completely before starting VSRX2. So I'm going to start VSRX2 right now. Okay, VSRX2 is now booting, and this will take a little bit to complete because we gotta go through the whole setting the cluster up process and rebooting. So I'm going to pause the video and uh, wait for the devices to reboot completely. All right, so I have been running a ping in the background to the FXP0 interface addresses for VSRX1 and VSRX2, just so I can know when those devices are ready and up. And the ping is working now. And so the best thing to do here is we could wait a little longer or we can click Refresh Browser. It's just quicker and easier to click Refresh Browser. And then we're taken to the login page. So let's go ahead and log in with that root password that we set. Remember that root password is what we set during that chassis cluster setup wizard. So if it's different from what the root password was before, you'll need to use that new root password. Okay, so let's go to cluster HA setup again. And notice how it just continues on from where we were. So it says here, reboot complete, power on your secondary unit to establish a chassis cluster connection. And we did that earlier. There was no need to wait longer, wait for the screen. Uh, you can, it's not a big deal to wait for the screen and then power on the secondary node. But after rebooting that primary node, you could 
power on that uh, secondary node without any issue. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And then it connects to the chassis cluster to verify that everything's working. And so it can take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video while it connects. All right, so it's connected and verified the chassis cluster. So everything looks good there. Now we have the option to configure some basic chassis cluster settings. And JWeb wants to know if we need to configure an untrust interface and the IP address associated with that and which memory interfaces to use on the different nodes. So this will set up a wreath interface for this. So let's go ahead and, well, we first could sec select DHCP, but we're not gonna do that. Let's go ahead and type in the address and then specify the default gateway. And then we specify the member interfaces. And recall that we were going to use Gigi003 for node zero, and then Gigi703 automatically is selected for node one. You can change this if necessary, but it just assumes by default that you're going to select the corresponding interface on the other node, which is best practice to do. So we can click next and this completes the configuration. Okay, so we're given a message that the configuration was successful and we can click finish to exit the wizard. And after exiting the wizard, we are presented or shown the chassis cluster, cluster configuration workspace and it shows node zero and one. And note that the host name has changed. This is no longer VSRX one and VSRX two. It's VSRX A and VSRX B. That's just what it does. You can change the host name afterwards if necessary, but not a big deal. And then we can see in the status that which node is primary, which one is secondary. Node zero is primary, node one is secondary. That looks great. And so one last thing I do wanna show is if we go to the monitor workspace and then the system view and then the cluster status workspace, and under here, we can see that we have some information. We can see the redundancy groups, zero and one, which is configured. We can see if there are any failovers, we can do a failover switch, a manually, manual failover switch, that is. You can see the priority, uh, the status, primary, secondary, both redundancy groups are primary on node zero. And you can see some other information like preempt, manual failover, monitoring failovers, things like that. And we can see if there's IP monitoring or interface monitoring setup, which there's not. And then we can click on the cluster statistics workspace link. And here we can see different information. We can see controlling statistics, fabric link statistics, and services synchronized statistics as well. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed chassis clustering, and then we also demonstrated how to set up and configure chassis clustering using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.